Good afternoon. I'm John Nickus, and we're here for an SCM Buy, Sell, Hold Market Moment with Philip Richter from Turtle Garage. And this afternoon, we're going to look at an underappreciated classic, but it looks like it's having a market moment right now, which is the Volkswagen Cabriolet. And the reason we're looking at this car is there is a $70,000 sale out there on Bring a Trailer of a 39-mile Wolfsburg Edition Cabriolet. Philip, what explains that incredible number? I mean, I think it's explained by the fact that uh, it, you'll never find another that original in the wrapper uh, that's a time capsule. And people are paying huge multiples for originality, unrestored, unused cars of that era. It's a nostalgia play uh, where people want the absolute best. And this example was clearly right there. I mean, unused in the wrapper. I mean, we're talking 10 times what the value guide says for a low mileage, good condition example. What does someone do with this? I mean, what what did someone do with this for the last 40 something years um, to keep it with 39 miles? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I'd be really interesting to get the prior owner on this uh, on this cast. But, you know, I, I think it just depends on the buyer. You know, some buyers uh, want the nostalgia. They want the best example in their collection. They may have had their first date in that car in that exact color combo. Who knows? But they're willing to pay up for it. And it's not just uh, Ferraris and, and high-end cars that are getting these kinds of multiples. We're seeing it now in cars like this, where they're coming out of the woodwork Pretty much thanks to BAT, BAT's enabled uh, these types of cars to get to a wide audience where there is a, the breadth and scope of buyers out there that can enable these kinds of outcomes, which is fascinating. It's like crowdsourcing for low mileage VWs. Well, it's amazing. And we were talking before this started about there's an F-150 on Bring a Trailer right now. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a 1980 F-150 4x4 on Bring a Trailer. It has 38 miles. It's at thirty-five thousand dollars, and it's it. Could that truck hit a hundred thousand dollars? You know, I don't know. I mean, it's interesting, and I, I was surprised to find out the other day, Philip. I thought, you know, because we're the same age, we certainly grew up with this car, which I once thought was the exclusive province of hot girls in high school. Yeah, um, I'm surprised that you had one. What's the story there? Well, actually, we still have it. Um, so my, my father emigrated here from Hamburg, Germany, and always drove Volkswagens. He had split window Beetles and everything. Uh, and my brother was graduating from Dartmouth College in 1989. And my dad bought it for him as a graduation gift, as a surprise. And we picked it up at the dealer, drove it up to Dartmouth for graduation. My brother saw the car and he's like, whose car is that? And my dad's like, I got it for you for graduation. And my brother hated it and didn't want it. And ended up, he got ended up getting a Jetta GLI 16 valve. And we paid for this car, so my dad gave it to me. And I took it to college and drove it for three years at Boston College. And then it retired to my mom's place in Florida and has been in Florida ever since. But the point is, is, you know, in, in 89, that car, or 88, that car went up through an upgrade of the bodywork. It had the double headlights in the front. It had the wider side skirts, interior upgrades. It actually... It actually is the one few examples of a car that got a later facelift treatment with plastic add-ons that actually made it look a lot better. Which and, is super uh, rare. Yeah, and it's a fun car. I mean, it's easy to put the top down. It, it's, it's, a, it's comfortable to drive. It's great for little local jaunts. And it's that original Golf 1 platform, which has that wonderful angular design, uh, which I'm trying to remember which... Um, which design firm designed that car initially, but it was one of the one of the top ones. It was designed yeah, outside of Volkswagen. I, I think it's Guajaro's one of his best designs. That's that's who it is, Guajaro. Yeah, and it, yes. it, it really looks good. I, I'm a big fan of the original Rabbit. Um, anything yep. on that original Golf platform, I think, is amazing. And yep. you know, if you were to give me a GTI, I would love you forever. But how how does this car compare to? say, you know, a Miata or something else that's pretty similar um, if you wanted to tool around on the weekends and take the top down? Well, it's, it's you know, the Miata is a... Um, it's is, a proper sports car, and this isn't. But, I mean, what is yeah, the... But also, technologically, the Miata is a modern car that, it, you know, is, is really, really... Even today, when you drive a first-generation Miata, it's like you can't 
find fault in that car, the way it drives. There's nothing that they could have improved on that car. It's perfection. The VW is an, a, a much, much older design. It's an evolution. They chopped the top at Carmen. Uh, you know, this was it was getting long in the tooth by the late 80s for sure. I think the first generation Golf came out in 76, the first Rabbit 77, right around there. So this is an old car dinosaur platform that lived long beyond its existence. In fact, when the when the second uh, generation of the Golf came out in 1985, they continued to build the Cabriolet for seven more years on the old platform. Which right, is amazing. It, it's yeah, it was amazing, and and they're durable little cars. And the great thing about the Cabriolet is, you know. Volkswagen went through this horrendous period uh, where they had the Westmoreland, Pennsylvania factory and they were building GTIs there and diesel VWs. And these things were, uh, you know, the, the most poorly manufactured vehicles you could ever imagine. But the Cabriolet was built in Germany by Carmen and was 100 percent German. So the build quality on the Cabriolet far eclipses the U.S. versions of similar VWs of that era. Well, it's interesting. Before we wrap it up, let's go back to this issue of these ultra-low mileage cars. And, you know, it's not uncommon to see an ultra-low mileage exotic and even an ultra-low mileage um, sports car. I'm really curious, and you're right, we have to go back and talk to the original owners. How did they get these, you know, relatively pedestrian, you know, proletarian cars and then not use them at all for their intended purpose? You know, yeah, save them. You know, it's it's like like I said, you know, it's like, you know, saving your wife for her next husband. Like, why was this car not driven and why was it stored for so long? Um, I, I think it's fascinating, but the, the multiples seem to be increasing and it's not just exotic cars with delivery miles. Now it's coming down into the Volkswagen and the pickup truck world. Uh, there was uh, a, bron a white Bronco on Bring a Trailer a couple months ago, the O.J. Simpson type Bronco, and it had like 400 miles on it. I, I, it sold for a fortune, right? Because it's only new once, right? Something like this is only new once. I don't care how good – I don't care if you call Paul Russell and get him in here and you make it perfect. It's not It's not what it once was. It's been restored. And, you know, Miles Collier always talks about respecting the artifact, and, and keeping things original. In an unused brand new Cabriolet, the artifact is completely respected. Like it's it's as it was, assuming it was stored properly, assuming it was maintained properly. So, you know, I, I, I've had sale, it's situations in my own personal garage where this no mileage multiple made my jaw drop. I mean, it was I was gobsmacked by what I sold my E24 M6 for that had 1,700 original miles, U.S. car. But people want that. There is a narrow market that wants that. And, and how did your car survive that long with so few miles? Uh, you know, I started it very frequently. It got serviced very frequently. It was climate controlled, no mice. I mean, that's the big enemy, right? Like it was on a lift. It was preserved. It was covered. But that's a car to drive. I mean, that's a perfect driver's car. It's I've a great driver's it. car. I mean, yeah, that's, you know, that's the thing. And I have the same, I have a, a R129 V12 Mercedes SL that has 187 original miles. And it's the same thing. That car should be driven. I service it every year. It, it doesn't just sit. But, uh, you know, I, I had a 129 and drove it 50,000 miles. So it's sort of out of my system. And now I really enjoy looking at that car. It's, it's, it's just a piece of work, a piece of art. Um, and that's what this cabriolet for the right person represents, right? So that what, is that what these cars become? They go from automobiles to artifacts when they just have this incredibly yeah. limited use. I think so because that car will never be driven. Now it's too it's too special. I mean, who would ever thought we'd be having this conversation that a VW cabriolet is too special to use? But it is. It's it's the it's it is a authentic, unrestored original that you'll never be able to get back again. I, I, I'm gobsmacked is the right word. And yeah. I, I, I'm surprised, but I completely understand, I think, what the buyer was thinking. Yeah. Um, and I think if there was a right car out there, you know, that I had a great affection for or a great sentimental attachment to, I think I might do the same thing. Yeah. And, you know, think about it. I mean, before Bring a Trailer, 
these cars had a very narrow market. Today, they still have a narrow market, but it's way wider than it used to be before the internet. So these cars are coming out of the woodwork where we're like, how, who saved a 1984 pickup truck 4x4? Who saved a Ford Bronco? Who saved a Cabriolet and never drove it? Well, people have, and now they get on Bring a Trailer, and the eyeballs from around the globe are on that car, and there's a buyer. There's a huge, huge market, even in the narrowest niche. It's a global market, which is fascinating. Yeah, and I think Randy Nonnenberg deserves to be sainted for something, you know, like this. Yeah, um, I mean, he, he changed the entire game. He, he was a, he's a game changer and an innovator and a pioneer and an entrepreneur, and I give him all the credit in the world. I completely agree, and he's a, he's a wonderful guy, and he's a great, yeah, great guy. Um, yeah. um, Philip, thank you so much, and this has been an SCM Buy, Sell, Hold, Market moment. Thanks for joining us. Great, John. Take care.